Hey guys, welcome to Automate with Rakesh. In this video, we are going to learn how can you get the process key or the release key of a given process from your orchestrator. These process keys are very useful or known as release keys are pretty useful when you would like to start a process or start a job in orchestrator using API calls. So let's see how this can be done in easy steps. All right, first of all on your orchestrator, go to the folder where you have the processes and you might be having more than one. So here I have only have one process. So this is process has a name good dot morning. This is the name of the process. But to start a job, you actually need the process key of this process. Okay, what is that process key? Let me show you. Now, anytime you have to deal with API documents or API endpoint, you don't know what is the endpoint. One of the simplest way is to type UI path API docs. So here you would find the official uh, page where you have the proper API endpoints, which you can always trust and refer. So once you are on this page, uh, look for the process. Okay, on the left hand side, there will be something called process, process request. Okay, so click on this process request, click on this, and on this page, retrieving the first one, the very first one is a get request, retrieving processes according to their name. Okay, what if I don't even want to give the name? I just want to see all the processes and their keys. Okay, that's all my aim is. Now, if that is the case, no worries. All you do, copy this entire URL that is there to a notepad. Okay, so I'm going to remove this and paste it here. So this is the endpoint. Now, if you are running a orchestrator HTTP request from your UAPA Studio, then you actually don't need this orchestrator URL. Remove it. Put a double quote and then releases and the filter criteria name equals to all you know the name of the so I don't want that so I'll simply keep it O data releases pretty simple to even edit the API links available from the API docs uh, of UI path copy this and then let's start something called uh, let's have an activity HTTP requests drag and drop this activity so let's learn how to configure this activity first okay now the very first thing, where is the folder where you would like to pull the process? So you select your folder. Done. The next thing, the method is important. Here we would like to get the details. So select get. The endpoint. Just now we have built the endpoint. So copy paste this endpoint. Done. Save it. Now here the payload is not required. You simply want to get the information. Now once you have this, see I have got multiple double quotes. Simply paste it. Yeah. So now it is correct. Okay, next thing I would like to see the data. To see the data, there are two things for this activity. You actually create two, uh, um, uh, what do you say, variables. So let me create a variable. Let me see if I already have some variables. No, let's create few variables here for JSON's response. I'm going to say J response. So this is my variable for the status code. Let's create another variable called status code and let's check the variable type so it is a string and integer okay fine now very first thing you do use a right line activity right line activity and here let's get the status code written and this is an integer type so convert it to dot to string okay now the next activity that you need is deserialize json drag and drop this activity quite simple steps so you got this activity now we will pass the j response variable and the output will be deserialized so create a variable and give it a name called j response deserialized okay this is the another variable that i've created now this variable let's check the type it's object type it's fine now let's have actually you can convert it to a json object okay instead of normal object so type g object okay g object g object
okay so here j object is created fine now we have got the j object let's print the j object entirely using another line, right line activity so j response deserialize which is json object dot to string okay so our workflow is complete now let's quickly run this and see what is the response we are getting from the orchestrator so this is my orchestrator which has only one process so it should only give me details about this specific process if you have multiple processes then it will give you a huge uh, set of data so let's wait okay so the execution has started okay let's see the response code 200 that means it has got the data now let's see the data so this is the data okay now this is the entire thing simply highlight go to output highlight this copy this to a notepad okay so here now tell me which is the release key the release key is nothing but this is called process key good morning this is an actual the name the key is this one okay this is the key so what is the output that you have got this is the output so if somebody asks what is the release key then you should provide this one this one this within the double quotes this is the actual key getting it now i'm going to show you using this key how you can start a process the process which is currently there on my orchestrator using that key how can you start a process let's see in my next video so let's move on to my next video before that give it a like to this video and do subscribe in case you have not subscribed to my channel thank you guys